Secretary of State Anthony Blinken is holding talks Tuesday and Wednesday in Nigeria, the largest country by population and economy in the sub-Saharan Africa. His visit to the continent comes amid concerns about stability in the Sahel sub-region of West Africa following several coups in Mali, Burkina Faso, Guinea, and Niger since 2020, viewers senior diplomatic correspondent Cindy Singh reports. Secretary of State Antony Blinken met with Nigerian President Bola Tinubu on Tuesday and praised his leadership, but said it is no secret that there are challenges that need to be overcome to unlock the full potential of Africa's largest democracy. Tackling corruption, making it easier for foreign companies to repatriate capital, these will all pull in a transformative direction and pull in transformative direction, uh, investment. Uh, I know that President Tinubu is focused on these challenges, and we also welcome his very bold economic reforms to unify the currency and, and fuel subsidies. Blinken said he had discussed the July coup by a military junta in neighboring Niger. We also discussed challenges to democracy and security in West Africa. Uh, we very much appreciate Nigeria's leadership in ECOWAS to try to move to a return to the constitutional order and democracy in Niger after it's been uh, disrupted. Blinken traveled to Nigeria from the Ivory Coast, where he met with Ivorian President Alassane Ouattara and discussed regional security challenges. We appreciate uh, particularly the leadership shown by Cote d'Ivoire in countering extremism uh, and violence. Blinken said this is his third trip to Nigeria as the top U.S. diplomat, including a virtual visit during the early days of the COVID-19 pandemic. One expert told VOA the Biden administration's diplomatic commitment to Africa is remarkable. Uh, you know, I've been working in and on Africa since 1985, and I've really never seen so much attention uh, to, uh, by the U.S. government to the continent, which I think is a great, great sign of U.S. engagement. On Monday, Blinken launched the trip with a stopover in Cape Verde, a long-standing partner of the United States. Cindy Sane, VOA News. Burundi and Rwanda relations have continued to deteriorate, with Kigali accusing Burundi's President Ivarisi Undaishimeya of inciting division among Rwandans. Burundi denied the allegations in a recent statement, saying that the accusations are unfounded. Moses Javier Rimana has the story. In a national address on the country's state of affairs, Rwanda's President Paul Kagame said that the country would not be provoked by neighbors. He said that Kigali has nothing to do with the ongoing conflict in the Eastern DRC that has seen clashes between the M23 and the country's army. Rwanda did not in any way create this war that is happening in Eastern Congo. When it comes to defending this country that has suffered for so long and nobody came to the... I don't need the permission from anybody. To do what we have to do, protect ourselves. I will say it in the broad daylight. The president's comments come after Kigali released the statement accusing Burundi's president of inciting division among Rwandans. It also said that President Evariste Ndaishimi further jeopardized the peace and security in the Great Lakes region. In a video circulating on social media showed Burundi's President Evariste Ndaishimiye addressing Congolese youth, saying that Rwandan youths cannot accept to be prisoners. However, in a statement on Tuesday, the Burundi government said that Rwanda's allegations were unfounded and that Kigali is propagating disinformation. According to Burundi's government, President Ndaishimiye was responding to the concerns submitted to him on the failure of Rwandan youth to take part in regional meetings. George Odong is an East African Legislative Assembly lawmaker from Uganda. He says he is calling on the East African community to bring the two countries to the table. The escalation of tension between these two partner states is deeply regrettable. It is important that they seek the most peaceful way of resolving their differences. The East African community also needs to ensure that they nip the situation in the bud. So it is important that the community um, actively engages the two partner states. 
Relations between the two countries deteriorated early this year when Burundi closed its borders with Rwanda less than two years after it was reopened. John Bosco Kalisa is the chief executive officer of the East African Business Council. He says that political conflict between the two countries is affecting trade. We argue the president um, of Burundi to open the border and allow trade to continue to, to flow because trade has a positive impact on the citizens' welfare. So uh, really it's not a, a good move. It's a, it, it is going to disrupt trade and it's going to disrupt investment flows between the two countries. Relations between Burundi and Rwanda seemed to be improving after 2020 when the incumbent president Evariste Ndaishimiye took over the office. However, it deteriorated after an armed group killed at least 20 people in Bujumbura in December last year. Burundi says the rebels are being supported and trained by Rwanda. However, Kigali says it does not support any armed groups working to destabilize its neighbors, including DRC. South styled Kenyan pastor Paul McKenzie, his wife and 93 other accomplices were charged with manslaughter at the Mombasa Law Court on Tuesday. All pleaded not guilty to the 238 counts of manslaughter allegedly committed between January 2021 and February 2023. A total of 429 members, including children of Mackenzie's Good News International Church, died. The bodies were discovered in dozens of shallow graves on a 800-acre ranch in the remote area known as Shakahora Forest in the coastal country of Kifi. The graves were found after police rescued 15 emaciated church members who told investigators that Mackenzie had instructed them to fast to death before the world ends. Autopsies on some of the bodies found in the graves showed they died from starvation, strangulation or suffocation. According to local media, the magistrate ruled Tuesday for the 95 accused to appear before the court on February 13th where he would give his judgment on bail and bond terms.